Good morning, Marianne. Good morning, morning. Justin. Good morning. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us this morning. We're doing a really great uh, uh, well, a little short bit around password security. It's such a huge uh, problem in out in the world. Passwords, password security, password management. Passwords, passwords, passwords. So we, we, <laughs> I don't know if it's a bad thing or a good thing, but here we are. Uh, yeah. I just want to say thank you, everyone, for uh, really liking and subscribing to some of the content we're putting out. I think it's some really great, uh, I think it's some really great feedback we've gotten people. And so uh, I'm kind of getting out of order here, but I'm really excited about today. So <laughs> excuse the excitement. It's infectious. Um, anyway, Marianne and Justin are here with me, and we're going to go through. They're, they're really leading this more than I am because they're definitely the experts in teaching us about new pass password and password best practices. So I'm going to kick it into high gear and say, what's password complexity? You hear that kicked around all over the, all over cybersecurity, the, that sort of thing. What yeah. does it mean? How does it work? So, yeah. So when I do our security best practice, we have a huge section on passwords. And one of the things I like to do to break it up is we go through the, uh, the top 15 breached common passwords like that have been reported. Uh, because passwords are such a huge vector for breaches. And if you have a non-complex password, uh, it's much easier to breach. Um, so we want to talk about what is complexity though and what makes it complex. So that's whenever you're signing for a password, uh, uh, an account, you're going to see things that are like, oh, it needs to be at least eight letters or eight um, digits long. It's got to have numbers, it's got to have, you know, capitals and lowercase and maybe a special character. So that adds complexity. If you think about it, the letters of the alphabet are only 26 different characters it can be. Right. You know, you can double that by adding capitals and you can like exponentially increase it by adding special characters and um, and numbers and all that type of stuff too. Right, so. right, right. And, and, and using non-dictionary words, right? That's kind of a big piece of it. Yeah, that's a thing. Um, not only are dictionary words easy for people to guess, like you may have seen it in on TV shows and stuff where someone says like, well, this person loves yogurt. So they type it in and that's it. Um, but it's also really <laughs> easy when, right. when people develop bots that like just go through and try and put it in as many combinations as they as they right. can, bots and and you know, know how to guess dictionary words because it's so common. So Right. Computers are really good at repetitive tasks yeah. like that, right? That's a, yeah. kind of what yeah. they do. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> load, load the whole yeah. dictionary database in and then the whole database of any password that anyone has ever used that they've cracked before, just load it in and just try mm -hmm. all of that. Right. And let's talk, I mean, dictionaries have slang in them now, so you're not going to get away with having YOLO. <laughs> <laughs> right. Exactly. FOMO. Uh, yeah, that sort of exactly. thing. So very good. So, um, so in terms of the characters, what are some of the characters that you would that we that we that we use besides that, just like you know at signs exclamation points that sort of thing. Yeah, I mean, even like we like to talk about um, past phrases as well because they're easier to right. remember. We'll talk a little bit about it later. But a space if they allow a space bar, that's a special character. Right. So yeah, so use that top row of your keyboard with the shift button to get all of those. You know, obviously you've got plenty of special characters. You know, the asterisk and stuff like that. Um, right. And actually talking about um, the different complexity and how long it takes a bot to to um, guess it, I, we actually have a website that I'm going to bring up cool. that will show that can show you a little bit about how long it would take for a bot to guess. So let me just get that up. Awesome. Give me one second uh, <laughs> to yeah, share I, my screen. While you're bringing that up, the, the term that's used is called a, a brute force attack because yeah. what you do is you have a, a bot or a, a program that basically just keeps throwing things. It's like it's just pounding on the door. It's just going to keep throwing stuff until it gets the right password combination. Mm -hmm. Right. Cool. So here, if we're talking about adding special characters, we're going to use the password. I'm typing in the word valiant. That's the name of our company, and it, uh, if something, if a robot was brute forcing it, you can see here, it would instantly be brute forced. Um, this is obviously very, this is a secure thing, so you're not seeing what passwords I'm typing in, but I'm going to type in Valiant with, uh, with a number one for the I and an A, an at sign for the A. And it already increased from instantly to seven minutes. Seven minutes, right. So you can tell it's still not that secure of a password, but it... Right. From instantly to seven minutes, that's what an infinite times amount harder to crack. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Seriously. 
So, and of course, like we're using non-dictionary words that has a significant increase in time as well, right? Yes. So we talked instantly for valiant, but if I spell valiant wrong, I'm going to do val i e e n t. So it turns it to 22 minutes. It's the same length, um, but it makes it harder because it's not a dictionary word. Now, if you look at the bottom, this is actually a cool website, howsecuresmypassword.net. It tells you what might be not that strong about it. So it says it's possibly a word. So that's a good thing to think about. Like, is Valiant a word or maybe it's the name of your company because you're trying to spell it cool? Um, <laughs> right. Yeah. So that's that gives you that. Not us. We don't do anything cool. So, <laughs> <Sure>. <laughs> so um, in terms of that, beyond that, I mean, we obviously that's a gas ability that's used in words. What are the what are the cr cr criteria would you say is important for um, for passwords? Honestly, yeah, I think the most uh, the best criteria is the length. So right. um, obviously, you need complexity, different characters, numbers, all that stuff. Right. But even just pure length, I'm going to type in valiant, which we already knew was instant. Oh, hang on, I, I added a capital, and then I'm going to add technology, which is our full company name, and it would take someone. 900,000 years, not someone, a computer, 900,000 years to crack that password. Every letter you add is an infinitely more uh, right. time that it takes for people to, to crack it and harder for you know, like humans to guess as well as robots to right. guess. Right. Um, now, Valiant Technology would be a terrible password for us because it's the name of our company. So right. keep that in mind, but right. that, longer that, is always better. Longer is better. And non-personal information, I suppose, is really the key here, right? Yes. So Absolutely. You know, you know, things that are easily guessable on the internet, Facebook, things people know. Yeah, well, I mean, a, a lot of, watch out for the, the things you post on Facebook when you say things like, like it might ask you, uh, what's your favorite childhood movie? And if you type that in, but then that's also one of your like passwords or security right. pa questions to get your password back. So mm -hmm. think about that. Gotcha. Um, I actually just had this conversation yesterday with my stepdaughter because she was asking what I was doing at work. And I was saying that like, we're talking about insecure passwords. So we wouldn't use Cappy Samus as a password because that's our dog's names. And she goes, but people wouldn't know our dog's names. And I explained that we all, we were walking the dogs. We we're saying their names out loud for all our neighbors to hear. I'm saying, good right. boy, Cappy, come along, Samus. So <laughs> if that was my Wi-Fi password, my neighbors could steal my Wi-Fi. It's not. Sorry, right. guys. <laughs> <laughs> not going to happen. Just so we're talking right. like minor things as, a, as opposed to broader things. Um, right. Right. Yeah. yeah good. So now we kind of have some complexity to understand like how to set them up, that sort of thing. What's one of the things that we that we have a huge uh, we see as a massive issue is storing and having visibility of passwords, you know, yeah. so uh, sharing. So, you know, I'd love to hear just go over that sharing password thing. why you don't do it. Why you why you don't want people to know your passwords. Why is that? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, for the obvious thing that they could get into your accounts, but you also don't want them to be able to identify as you. Um, I know JP wanted to talk a little bit about like, you know, there's some things like if you're sharing your Netflix password with your uh, roommate, some people do that. Um, yeah. And there's an inherent risk that you might determine is acceptable, but, right. you know, yeah, you, go I, ahead. And talk about uh, yeah, the, <laughs> the line is really is that, that your password, like, like George uh, was saying too, and Marion, like you were saying, is uh, allow someone to identify as you. It's like handing them your driver's license to go buy something with and say, yep, this is mm -hmm. me. And if you're okay giving that to somebody for something and you're following all the other password guidelines, like you're not sharing, you know, using that password for other things and it's secure and complex and the thing that you're giving them access to and that you're letting them impersonate you with, you're, you're okay with that, then yeah, share your Netflix password, share your Disney Plus password. You, it, it's, it's yeah. It's, <laughs> it's I would say, but even then, like, I don't want people to do like. Right. Yeah. You know what they can well, do no, with your. You definitely yeah. shouldn't. Same thing. You shouldn't be giving it out to everybody willy nilly. Yes. Just like you wouldn't hand somebody your driver's license to go buy something. Right. But if there's someone that you trust, that uh, like your roommate or somebody you live with or your family or someone along those lines that you would trust to you know, to uh, co to co sign a loan for them or uh, <laughs> trust to you know do right. stuff like that, then then yes, you're you're not breaking. You're not giving them access to anything more than they already have. Then Correct. that's okay. Also, gotcha. make that they make that a, a personal decision only. Don't do that yeah, for right. your business. And yeah, one good thing is absolutely. that there's there's always a way, especially with business uh, accounts, that you can make sort of multiple 
logins and things like that. So talk right. to your IT professional and they should be able to do that. Yeah, right. That is um, very much the one of the major distinctions between free and personal and oops, we'll do the free and personal <laughs> and and business level is that the the business level will have that administration access where you can give somebody their own username and password to access right. services and be able to revoke that when you need to. Right. Yeah. Gotcha. So we're talking never share, don't use the same password for multiple accounts, especially because of things like if your roommate has your Netflix password, you don't want them to have your email password. Correct. Um, you don't want to open up your business to liabilities that can be avoided just mm -hmm. by not sharing your password. So, um, right. Let me see. So I hear a lot of people always complaining that I have so many passwords. I have no idea how to store them. I, I, so I, I did this really cool thing. I took, a, I made a spreadsheet. I stored it on my, on my Google Docs. Is that a good idea? So is that a good uh, idea? You know, so uh, that makes sense. Should we do that? Yeah. So I mean, you can see we have a chart that actually shows how a oh, lot okay. of people save their passwords. Uh, memorize in their heads is one of the most secure ways until you have to change it every time you log in. Right. Um, when you you can write them down on. I've hit, heard people write them down on a piece of paper, and I've actually had people tell me like, "No, it's okay. I write it down on a piece of paper." Um, but that's not secure for a couple of reasons. One people can see that uh, you don't want someone if someone gets hold of the piece of paper now they have access to all your accounts and two you need that information and you could lose the paper it could you know if there's a fire you lose that information um, I have in my notes here do not write in a notebook and keep in the drawer of your computer desk dad so <laughs> dad if you're watching calling you out um, <laughs> A right. lot of people do the post-it notes, which is a, a big problem that I see it everywhere. I know I've, I've actually mentioned this on a live stream before, but I went to a meeting at a client and I looked over at the wall and went, hey, you know, I can get into the president's e uh, eBay account now or Venmo account. Right. So I was like, yeah, that's not good. Um, <laughs> yeah. So don't use post-it notes. Yeah. Don't even if you're hiding them. It's just obvious the where that's going not to. Them. Yeah, and it's That's obvious. Good. A lot of people have it right on the uh, on the monitor right there. Right, the monitor, like, the bezel. Yeah. I wonder yeah. what this was the password to. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. And uh, you know that. So, what do you do? What's what is the best practice? <laughs> oh, well, we have a lovely blog post about uh, pass storing passwords in a password manager, right. um, and then what you can do with that. So we are like big on password managers and mm -hmm. using them to store your passwords. Basically what it is, is it's an encrypted place for all your passwords to be stored. Um, the best ones have it so that they can fill it out for you. So it's not like you have to refer back to it like an Excel sheet and copy and paste. They have it so they can just plug them in. Right. Um, we really like, you see LastPass is one that I we made a, a knowledge base about how to set that up if you're interested. Right. And it can work for a lot of the ones that we like as well. Um, right. So yeah, so password management without sticky notes right there goes over a couple of the main ones that we like. Yeah, um, it's definitely been updated, but it definitely has some good valid and points in there about yeah, well, what is, why, why it's so important to keep those uh, passwords in an encrypted, not plain text, not on the yeah. open, not easily yeah. read. Yeah, so. and most of, most of them have a free version that you can even just try out and see if you like mm -hmm. it. Um, Right. So I definitely recommend looking that up. You've got LastPass got a free version. A couple of them do. So um, if you're talking for your company, you'll, that's the, what JP said. You know, it's it's not free anymore when you want it for your company, but for the price that it is, we'll talk. You can contact your <laughs> IT person. We'll right. talk about setting it up for your company and what works best for you. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. yeah, and there are, I mean, there are also some other alternatives to like the password managers built into browsers like Chrome. Those are better than writing it down, but uh, I like the password manager apps a little bit better only because they, the first part is with the ones in Chrome, you have to go in and encrypt them. They're not by default and mm -hmm. you have to put in a, a new pass, like a separate password just for that into your browser. Uh, if you do that, it's safe, uh, but it really only works then in Chrome. Whereas uh, at, like LastPass has a plugin for Chrome, it has a mobile plugin. So I have apps on my phone that I don't know the password for, it's just saved in my LastPass. Uh, and then that's the, the third thing that I really like about using something like LastPass is that it will generate those random, strong, secure passwords for you and then yeah. put it 
in for you so that you don't have to think about what's the password for this? What do I have to do? It's just- Did I put in enough special in. characters? Right. Yeah. right. It'll, it'll just generate it and you can set the default to, I think mine does uh, by default uh, 16 or 24 character passwords and mm -hmm. they're all just a random string of letters, numbers, yeah. special characters. And exactly. I don't know what any of them are because all I ever do is use LastPass to punch it in or copy and paste it in. Yep, yeah, yeah it makes a lot of sense. And you know, I think another piece that's, oh, we have a question. Here we are. Oh, very excited. Uh, if you use a higher end password manager like LastPass, do you still need to change your passwords on a regular basis? That's a great question, mm -hmm. Stefan. And should we answer it now or should we, should we go to our later section? What do you guys think? We actually, yeah. So I'm going to say <laughs> yes. Let's just answer that main part now. But later we'll talk about ways that you can don't have to be constantly rotating and changing mm -hmm. out your passwords. Right. It's expiring um, passwords. Got it. Okay. But so, yes. so, so the it's brief. Also, yeah, go oh, ahead. You, no, you, you, you go, Jerry. Go ahead. Sorry. No, I was just going to say, so we, we talked a little bit about it last time when we were on our last stream, which was the multi-factor authentication stream, is that you can be involved in a breach without even knowing. Um, so that is important that you don't want, like, if, if you're using a, a password manager for your Yahoo account, your Yahoo account still knows what your Yahoo password is. So if Yahoo is breached, that account password is out there. Um, so that is why... The password manager doesn't make it so that you don't need to change your password regularly right. or keep on top of that. Yeah, what password managers will help you do is contain that so that only the only account that uses that password is the one that was breached. So that mm -hmm. account is vulnerable, but at least it doesn't spread to anything else. Uh, right. But, mm -hmm. So excellent, excellent. That's a good point. So and one last thing that's really important, it sounds so goofy, but when you're typing your password, protect the uh, protect the actual keyboard you know uh we have some ideas like when i know when i would definitely did tech support people i always look away when they're yeah. typing we should actually yeah. even inform our staff to do that because we don't want to have anyone feeling that pressure it's kind of like the atm right i mean also when yeah, people have been doing that for years and years at the atm everyone knows like you just a little bit like hover in, make sure no one's right behind you. Yeah, right, okay. exactly. Give, them, give people that distance so that you're not looking at the screen and doing stuff. And right, I mean, exactly. I even do it a little when I'm at when I'm at on site at clients. I do it a little bit performatively, but partially because I want them to know that that's good practice for them as well. So I'm exactly. like, oh, you're typing in your password. I'm just gonna look over here. What a lovely painting! Like, right. I'm not gonna try to follow the keystrokes in my fingertips, you know. Or you can yeah. have a situation where you know things could, you know, passwords could get compromised. I mean, there's some. Yeah. There's definitely some uh, some imagery around that there's well yeah. there's also um i mean if you think about it yeah so this is something a lot of some things are when you type them in you can see the passwords come up if you've noticed that a lot of times it'll just blank out with stars that's a lot more secure um but this is an example from the incredibles uh, where right. the password it asks for the password and then on this giant screen when he types in the password it's visible you can see the whole right. thing it didn't start out so if you're in the room with that person, you know what the password is. Also, by the way, that is not a very secure password. <laughs> I know, it's terrible. Wrong. Um, but the funny thing is that that one is uh, covered by a literal firewall. So <laughs> <laughs> right. it's a wall of lava and to get to, to be able to see that. So if you make it past the wall of lava, you know what, that, that's gonna block you from seeing that password. Yeah, but that's also important it. to think about when you're typing things in. I mean, going back to like, you have roommates, if you're using the on-screen keyboard, mm -hmm. they're gonna see you go like L, O, B, E, they're going to be able to tell what your password is. <laughs> right. So exactly. think about who can see when you're Exactly. Your Very, it has to be just, just these small little things. And, you know, this is the Incredibles not how, not following a layered defense in depth. I mean, it's you know? 16, 16 <laughs> years old. They probably, maybe on, I, I forget I if in the Incredibles do they have any good, better examples. <laughs> I know. We'll, we'll have to double check. I have to rewatch that. Excellent. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Yeah. That's a good weekend project. <laughs> <It's> a good, <laughs> good, yeah. All right. I'm on it. All right. So, uh, and this is kind of keep, keep moving forward. Um, what about password policies? How about they enforce? And why do you enforce them? Why do you not enforce them? How's that? What, why? Why do we have these? What do they do? Exactly. Yeah, I mean, there are a lot of password policies that people should just follow, you know, on their own. But the the truth is, you can like there's a password checklist that you can do where you're having good complexity and things like that. But you don't have to just rely on the honor system, especially at your office. Um, your IT staff and your network engineers can make it so the so that it's required to have complexity. Mm -hmm. You can make a required minimum length. You can make that there has to be 
multiple cases. One of my uh, logins says that you have to like have a special character, but it has to be between the second and eighth. And it's like, oh, that's so annoying, but also much more secure. Um, <laughs> right. I think a lot of people can guess things. Like if your password is a word and then an exclamation point, like, yeah, that's, yeah, like, that's the first thing. That you used know. to be enough to be secure. And that's uh, a trick that uh, that the bots have caught on to. So exactly. yeah, it doesn't make it secure anymore. So you, yeah, you don't necessarily have to go to that length, but you can make, you know, a minimum of eight uh, make or longer because I like longer. Uh, you can make require at least one number, at least one special character, at least one capital, one lowercase. Um, right. So you can require that. And when people make their passwords, it'll reject any that don't follow those complexity requirements. It's interesting when we do a lot of IT assessments or onboardings of new clients, we see that and we start looking at some of these passwords and it invariably, wow. in, invariably leads to a... Uh, Oh boy! Oh, I can't believe this thing. <laughs> How this happened? Who did this? You know, it was yeah. a ridiculous IT guy kind of mode. But um, it's one of the things that we we like, I know we fix kind of like day one. Even if we don't work with someone, we see this assessment. We're, like, we're all about like, hey, let's let's yeah. you guys got to fix this. This is like a really mm. glaring alarm moment, you know. And you should probably yeah. put, and you should probably put MFA on as well if you can. That too. Well, also <laughs> I find that a lot of companies. Uh, there's two things. One. A lot of logins are way too obvious. It may involve their company name, and you can usually per make it so it detects, like we could detect if Valiant was in my password, and you would right. say rejected. Um, but we find a lot when new companies, we do these IT assessments, we can figure that stuff out. Right. And it's like, yeah, your company name is in half of your password. <laughs> yeah. um, and one thing is also bad is uh, we're also going to talk about expiring passwords because yes, it prevents really things yes. like, if your default password, which mine changed, but mine did have Valiant in it, if I kept <laughs> that default password, um, everyone would be able to guess because everyone got the same default password, you know? So it's right. like on my account um, or like a variation on it. They know that it's, you know, my first initial last name or whatever. Um, right. So expiration is something that has been like recommended for a long time. Um, and it's been a little bit up for debate lately, uh, but that's where you can make every 90 days, people have to change their passwords. Um, the things it's good for is if you're in a breach that you don't know, and we talked about that earlier, mm -hmm. it's also yeah. good for, you know, just in case someone did see, or just in case someone did share. I know some people are like, but I'm going on vacation. So I just want to make sure they had access to my files. Again, we can get them access to your files without you compromising your mm -hmm. password. Correct. Um, so that that usually is a good thing to set up every 90 days, even every six months to have people forced to change their password. But we get a ton of tickets on that day that the right. expiration comes in. Yeah. Uh, so how do you prevent that sort of work lossage on that day? Lossage is not a word, but you know. <laughs> stoppage. I think stop yeah. stoppage. stoppage work for that. Yeah. Lack of productivity. Yeah. And I think even yeah. in uh, uh Corollary to that too is not just the the uh, the the hassle of having to change your password. One of the things that having passwords changes. That if you remember the the uh, graph we had up earlier, the primary way that many people remember their password is in their head. So yes. now they are not coming up with super strong passwords because every ninety days they have to forget it and remember another one. And mm -hmm. people will do things like, "Oh, I just do a variation on this theme, or I cycle through this." And then at that point, it's kind yeah, of they're slowly counting up. <laughs> right, that, that's the so, one I see a lot. Counting up, it's like, "Oh, it's uh, eighty. 85, 90. Yeah. That's Which right. isn't going to help you if you're if you're protecting against your account has been breached because anyone that was using that account and then got locked out, the first thing they're going to do is like, okay, this looks like I'm going to try counting up that number. It was password yeah. one. Now it's password two. So right. Right. It, it exactly. was password 2015, but it's 2020. Yeah. Let's check it out. <laughs> yeah, it might be someone floating around in the background of places, I'm sure. 2015, yeah. 2010. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> um, excellent. And you know, once again, uh, I think MFA is like a great mm -hmm. solution to it's a great solution for, yeah. for many of the problems that we have. It's not 100% foolproof, but mm -hmm. it makes the barrier to entry so much higher and it eliminates a lot of the, uh, mm -hmm. the these expiration arguments that staff has. I think if you can extend it out where they have it maybe every six months or whatever it is, it can be a lot more efficient. A lot better. Yeah, and that, I mean, if you want to know more about MFA, if you didn't watch our video on MFA from last <laughs> week, uh, go watch it. Uh, it's really it's, good. It's really good. It's really um, good. But basically, we talk about why uh, having a second factor of authentication, such mm -hmm. as a authentication code or a text message or something like that, 
helps. Right. And um, not going to go into too many details, but it does prevent if you have MFA and you follow other good password practices, we may not even recommend that you have any expiration. Correct. So again, well, we could talk about that. Uh, you could talk about it with your with your IT people. You can talk about it with us. If we'll do an assessment, we can we can definitely consult mm -hmm. on that as well. Exactly. Um, but yeah, so if you implement the, all the items we've been talking about, but password security, you don't necessarily need to have that inconvenient mm -hmm. uh, password expiration. And I think one of the other things that are useful, great for. Uh, and it uh, would be uh, some of the rise of biometrics, which are, you know, people mm -hmm. use face recognition or mm -hmm. fingerprints, and they're kind of fraught because they can be, they have a lot of false positives or false yeah. negatives, there's yeah. errors, but it's it's definitely like a higher level of protection with biometrics. It's yeah, the, the, the trend that is, uh, uh, I would say, I'll say up and coming, but the trend that is, that is moving is to what's called passwordless login, where right. it's mm -hmm. no longer about uh, what you know, which is your password, it's what you have or who you are, which is again, biometrics. So doing a, uh, a fingerprint scan or a face scan or a retina scan type thing, uh, or uh, doing a, what you have, doing like a, a, a USB key or a, a smart, smart card. card. Right, Those types of, yeah. right. And in some ways, these are considered more secure than a password because what they do is rather than store the password in uh, like in the service. So we were talking about Yahoo before your Yahoo password. They have a copy of your password. If you're doing like a, a, a Windows Hello login, it stores all that information locally on a, on a secure chip on the computer. Same thing as like an iPhone or an Android phone where it stores it on the, the hardware. And what's sent back and forth is just an, an authentication, not the um, right. not the actual fingerprint data or the retina scan data. So for somebody to get into that account, they would have to have the physical computer and mimic your biometrics. And your eye. Yeah, yeah. And, and your eye. Kate, yeah, do a demolition man. But <laughs> I was waiting for it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah when we were discussing this before, I was like, well, I would caution against like facial recognition because that stuff is still not 100% there. But Justin made a good point is that, yeah, but you also need to have the phone to do yeah, that. Right. So, so if you're, yeah. It is still more secure in some ways than a password because someone can be remotely with the password, but they can't remotely have your phone to your face. Yeah. You know, or to their face. The or argument against it comes <laughs> up, yeah, is when you have the, you know, the, uh, what was it, Miriam, you're saying the, the one about the, the kid taking a sleeping mom's yeah, finger was, or things like that. So it's a commercial you where the kid to... takes mom's finger put, and unlocks the. <laughs> so, yeah, a little creepy there. But like you said, there's no, but a, a hacker somewhere else trying to crack in isn't going to be able to do that. Yes. So it, right. it protects against that. And you have to you know, keep the thing that you're using safe. Right. And exactly. in some ways, that's why uh, the, the key fob ones. Yeah, yeah. Which is. Uh, uh, you have a device like a key fob that you would plug in and then a pin that goes to that. And there you go. Now it's two factors, what you have and what you know, but it's all stored local to that device. It's you're decrypting the device with your pin and using the device that you have to authenticate. And then you're logged in and it's secure. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. So very cool. Um, I guess I, I, do you guys have anything else to add today or wrap this up? I mean, there's so much information yeah, I mean, here. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, follow everything we've been saying, but also, like, there are some things that you can enforce as sort of an agreement. So that's things like never reuse passwords for multiple accounts because it's hard to block that. Um, right. So that's just got to be something. And you, if, you, if you're working through your business, we have a lot of people who make security policies that their new employees have to sign and they have to agree that they're not going to use their Netflix password for their server login. Password. Right. <laughs> um, different accounts for every person on the account. So that's something that we do as well. If you've got like a UPS account, you can make different logins for the same account. Right. Um, and come up with a procedure for sharing access so that people, a lot of times when people do things like they share their passwords so so-and-so can get the file on their computer, it's because they don't know that there's a better way. Correct. So, you know, if you anticipate that, um, you can prevent that from happening by just giving them a solution, which actually we're going to talk a lot about next week. So, hey, transition. <laughs> exactly. Very perfect. Love it. So, yeah, exactly. So, and we'll start going through that in terms of sharing data 
and but having the ability to uh, have the authentication, authorization, and auditing, so we know who's doing what. That's a really critical piece of password management. Is that in the end of the day, we want to know who did what thing, mm -hmm. took what action at the time they did it, so that we have some clear uh, understanding of what occurred. It's it's a you know yeah. a piece, a critical piece of this any mm -hmm. IT policy or any you know in, in any business, regardless how big or small, and even mm -hmm. in your even in your own life, your bank your yeah. security all that sort of thing even beyond it it's any security you want to have the first step is prevention the second step is identification and then the third step is remediation you want to have all of those things planned out as right. to how am i going to prevent something from happening how am i going to know if something breached those defenses and what am i going to do when that happens and if you have all those things planned out you're you're in a better yeah. position than most exactly. yeah but actually and as it people it does give us information so like if something happens and you've got um, let's say you get ransomware on your server, we can more easily trace it back if people aren't sharing one account. Um, I can give you another analogy. My dog got out the other day and I didn't know <laughs> where. So that was something I did. After I took care of the event, I figured out where she got out uh, in, the, <laughs> in the fence and I fixed that. So that's what right. you want to do too. It's, it's easier to trace back if you know which account there was the issue mm -hmm. with. Great. Awesome. Well, that's a, a lot of great information for Ted. I'm really excited. Um, so next, so next, um, our next session is going to be on next Wednesday on shadow IT mm -hmm. and shadow IT is what happens when the IT department or IT provider is not really understanding what's happening in an environment and the users are doing everything they can to get their job done by going around IT. So mm -hmm. we're going to have a really in-depth conversation about it. And um, this is all part of a, a pretty big series that we're putting together around uh, IT security for SMBs. And, and it's going to kind of culminating next Wednesday, next Thursday, I'm sorry, at one o'clock on June 11th, we're doing a security best practices for small businesses. Uh, Mary and Justin and I are going to go through uh, some of the this top level, but with really good actionable items for what you can do to protect your business, protect yourself and uh, position to be in a position to grow. So we want to really excited to get that out and uh, please join us for that. And you can register at the link below and uh, it's gonna be on our blog website, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, beyond that, uh, you know, I really appreciate everyone's time uh, joining us today. And Mary and Justin, great as always, such good information. Yeah. I think, you know, I and every time we do one of these, I feel like I learned something new that I, I didn't, you know, I didn't know, I was like, oh, I didn't know that, you know, that's what, and, and if you do that enough times, yeah, I think you can be in a great position. So anyway, well, thanks a lot. And uh, I'll see Thank you guys you. later. All right. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, everybody. All right. So Bye. Bye now.